Uh, thanks for the introduction, and thanks for the opportunity to, to speak. Um, so my talk is titled Geometry of Shimura Varieties, but I'm probably going to talk about something uh, much more basic. Um, so what I want to do is sort of give like the, basically the most basic example of a Shimura variety, which is that of a modular curve to try and motivate why we study these objects. And then at the very end, I'll talk a little bit about like what I work on. Okay. So, so the theory of Shimura variety starts, I guess, with the theory of uh, modular forms. So at F be uh, modular forms, this is uh, a function on the upper half plane. So I won't bore you with the definitions. Um, so this is a modular form. So this uh, is some function, a holomorphic function on the upper half plane, which satisfies like a functional equation with respect to like, um, an action of like congruent subgroup. Um, and a congruent subgroup is a subgroup of SL2Z, which contains uh, these uh, principal congruent subgroups, gamma n. So this is the kernel of the map from SL2Z to SL2Z mod nz. OK. Um, and so these modular forms arose in the study of like elliptic integrals. Um, but people soon realized they had some very deep connection with number theory. So uh, people realized that if you look at the Fourier expansion of modular forms, so you can write uh, the modular forms uh, f of z equals sum from uh, n equals 0 to infinity of a n q to the n, where q is something like e to the 2 pi i z. So people realized uh, very uh, interesting arithmetic functions occur as the Fourier coefficients of modular forms. So for example, uh, if you look at this unique weight 12 uh, cusp form, uh, which is Ramanujan's uh, delta function, so this is given by uh, q. This has Fourier expansion given by q times the product uh, of n greater equal to 1 of 1 minus q to the n to the power 24. So this equals uh, some uh, from n uh, equals 1 to infinity of uh, tau n q to the n, where this tau is Ramanujan's uh, tau function. Uh, so Ramanujan conjectured that These, these coefficients satisfy the following property, the following bound. So he conjectured that the absolute value uh, was less than or equal to uh, 2p to the 11 over 2 for all primes p. Um, so sort of in the 50 years after Ramanujan made this conjecture, people tried to attack uh, this conjecture using analytic methods. And they did quite well. They managed to get this bound down to like 2p to the 11 over 2 plus some very small exponent. Um, but using analysis, they weren't able to um, sort of hit this magic number. And sort of the solution eventually came, which is due to Deline, um, and the solution was used algebraic methods. Um, so to sort of explain this, we need to give um, a different interpretation of modular forms, uh, a more algebraic interpretation. So I'll define this yn to be the quotient of the upper half plane by this congruent subgroup um, h, uh, uh, this congruent sub subgroup gamma n. And uh, so this is like a Riemann surface. And it turns out modular forms, uh, they sort of live on yn. Uh, so to be more precise, modular forms occur as sections of uh, line bundles uh, on this Riemann surface. And in general, Schremer varieties are like spaces on which automorphic forms live. Um, so uh, sort of the magic thing that happens is that this, this yn is actually algebraic. Uh, so it's an algebraic variety, but not only over like some large field like the complex numbers, but actually over uh, a number field. So it's algebraic over this field q adjoined uh, the nth roots of unity. OK. And so sort of from the modern point of view, this, you can interpret this um, algebraicity statement using Groth and Dick's functor of points. So there's another way to interpret this is that if you consider the functor on schemes which takes the scheme S, the set of uh, elliptic curves E over S, together with the trivialization of its n torsion, modulo some suitable notion of isomorphism, 
then uh, it turns out that this functor is represented by a certain union of these uh, YNs that I considered. So I'll call them YN prime. And this sorry, YN prime. And this YN prime is really what's going to be like the Shimura variety. Um, so another upshot of this definition is that you can see that there's an action on the space of the group GL2Z mod NZ just by sort of modifying this isomorphism. Okay. And this, this action is, is algebraic. So now I can let n go to infinity. And what happens is that I, I get this tower running over all uh, n integers mn ordered by divisibility of these unions of modular curves, uh, yn prime and yn prime. And I have like some inverse limit guy sitting at the top. And it turns out these actions all glue to give an action of gl2 z hat, which you can actually show extends to an action of <coughs> gl2 of the finite Adels on this tower. Um, so this is called the Hecker action. And somehow this gives a geometric interpretation of like the Hecker operators on, on modular forms. Um, so in particular, it's sort of this action sort of already encodes like all the information of like the Fourier coefficients of like these modular forms. And sort of in general, using the theory of like automorphic forms and automorphic representation, this object sort of lives in the world of uh, representation theory. Okay, uh, I forgot to mention. So this this union is actually defined uh, over over the uh, over Q, the rational numbers. And uh, so by virtue of the fact that these Y n primes are all defined over over Q, you also have this uh, Gower action of the absolute Gower group of Q. And this is like an important object of study in number theory. Uh, so the point is to try and, the idea is to try and like relate these two sides. So you have these two, uh, these two actions, very large profinite groups, which uh, act in this space. And by studying how they interact, uh, you can try and relate these two sides. And to be more precise, this, you can express the, this relationship using the theory of uh, L functions. So associated to this uh, Hecker action, you can associate things called automorphic L functions. And on this side, you can associate things which are called uh, motivic L functions. And basically, according to Langlands, uh, these two types of L functions should be the same. OK. And so the upshot of this is that sort of since these two L functions are defined in different, different ways, you have different techniques which are available on one side and not the other. So for example, it's conjectured that all motivic L functions have an analytic continuation to the whole complex plane. And so the only way we know how to do that at the moment is to try and relate to some automorphic L functions. Um, and conversely, with certain motivic L functions, you have things like the vague conjectures, which you can use to uh, constrain the location of the zeros of these L functions, and um, hence bound like the coefficients of these L, um, L functions. And this is how Deline uh, originally proved uh, this conjecture for Manajan. So he showed that um, the, this, the L function associated to this, this cup, cusp form actually uh, arose at, was actually a motivic L function, which occurred in the cohomology of these uh, modular curves. And moreover, they lied in the range of application of the, of the vague conjectures. Okay, so this is like a very, very powerful, very powerful technique. And sort of the only way you can sort of try and build this, con uh, this, this correspondence using this diagram is to study the geometry of these spaces, which in general will be Shimura varieties. Okay. Um, so basically, you want to try and play this game with sort of more general L functions. And, we'll, and um, to do that, you have to introduce Shimura varieties. So uh, basically, there's a formalism which is due to the Deline, where if you have G, a reductive group uh, uh, over Q, so this is reductive group over Q, and X will be like a consciously class of homomorphisms from C cross, the complex, no, the, uh, 
complex points, uh, complex numbers without zero, into G of R, um, the R points of this reductive group. And suppose you also have a compact open K in G of the finite Adels, then as a formalism, the Lean's formalism associates uh, something called a Shimura variety. So, so as before, this starts off life as like a quotient of some um, uh, complex manifold by like a discrete, sub, uh, discrete group acting on it. Um, but the magic thing is that these are all, these Shimura values are all algebraic, so they're defined over some canonical number field. And uh, again, you can form this tower uh, over all sort of compact opens. And again, on this tower, you have now have like an action of G of uh, the, adetic, the finite adetic points of G. And also, uh, you have an action of the absolute Gower group of this field. And you can try and play the same game to try and relate the two sites. Okay. Um, so that's the basic uh, motivation for Shimura varieties. Um, so now let me talk a bit about what I'm interested in. So the problem is the following. So, so it's sort of trying, it's sort of going in the op opposite direction to what Deline did. So you start off with like a certain motivic L function and try and write it in terms of uh, automorphic L functions. So the problem is to write uh, the Hasse zeta function. Or the Shimura variety uh, in terms of automorphic L functions. So uh, in a series of papers in the 70s, Langlands outlined a program to do this. And the first step in this program is uh, now, I guess, known as what's called Langlands uh, Rappaport conjecture. So uh, this conjecture describes the, uh, the FB bar points of a certain integral model for the Shimura variety. So this script SK is going to be an integral model for the Shimura variety. So this is some object which lives over like the ring of integers of E localized to a certain prime P. Uh, which divides uh, uh, certain prime v, which divides p. Uh, sort of the point is this Hasse zeta function uh, is defined as like a product of uh, as an Euler product of certain local factors, and the local factors you can compute by um, sort of counting uh, the mod peak points of certain integral models um, at, of the Schirmer variety at that at that place. So the langlands raffel conjecture describes the fe bar points of of this integral model. And moreover, this description is sort of amenable to comparison with the Arthur Selberg trace formula. Okay. So uh, before I sort of describe uh, what I did, um, you should note that Shimura varieties come in like a kind of hierarchy. So the simplest type, uh, let's do it here. So the simplest type of Shimura varieties, I guess, are what's <coughs> called PL type Shimura varieties. So these Shimura varieties are very closely related to like moduli spaces of elliptic curves or abelian varieties. So like the modular curves that we saw um, is an example of a PL type Shimura variety. Um, also like things like Hilbert modular varieties are an example. Um, and then sort of more generally, you have these Hodge slash abelian type uh, Shimura varieties. So these are still kind of related to like moduli spaces of abelian varieties, but in like a much more vague way. And so an example of something which occurs here is like Shimura varieties associated to orthogonal groups. And finally, you get like all Shimura varieties. So here you can get like exceptional groups as well. Um, so in terms of this, this conjecture, I, th I think the first major breakthrough 
was done uh, by Kotwitz. Uh, and recently, uh, uh, Kissin constructed interval models for hot slash abelian type Shimura varieties. Uh, sorry. Kissin uh, constructed uh, model, integral models for Hodge slash abelian type Shimura varieties and proved the conjecture uh, for, the, for these models. But in both these cases, the authors considered what's called good reduction of Shimura varieties. So this is when like, this integral model is smooth over this arithmetic ring. Um, so in the case of bad reduction, uh, Kissin and Pappas have recently constructed integral models uh, uh, for parahoric level structure for Hodge slash abelian type Tremor varieties. And in my thesis, uh, uh, I've proved some cases of this conjecture for, for, for these Tremor varieties. Um, so somehow, like the proofs are like a bit more difficult in the, in the case of bad reduction. But the upshot is you can sort of use the more interesting geometry to coax out some more interesting arithmetic, uh, arithmetic results. So for example, um, you can use some things that I proved in my thesis to deduce like a, like a generalization to Shimura varieties of this classical Manin's problem. So Manin's problem asks uh, uh, if you're given a p-divisible group with symmetric slopes, whether this arises from some uh, abelian variety up to isogeny. And you can formulate this in terms of Shimura varieties. And um, so um, you, can use, you can use the bad reduction of Shimura varieties to like, prove the result. Uh, and uh, so. Yeah, so that's something that I worked on. And in general, um, what I'm interested in doing as well, see, so these PL types from varieties have been studied like, very extensively over the last like, few decades. And I'm interested in sort of seeing which, which results were generalized to Hodge slash abelian types from varieties, and also trying to find some arithmetic applications for, for these results.